Next is Homa Arjaman, who's from Canada. Hodja is an Iranian-born political activist running the international campaign against Sharia court in Canada and others including uh, to close down Iranian embassies and for one secular school system in Ontario. She received the 2005 T Toronto Humanist of the Year Award and was recognized as Woman of the Year by the Gazette des Femmes, amongst others. She is the spokeswoman of Women's Liberation in Canada and a founder of the Cultural Bridges Association. Honor. Thank you. I'm so glad to be here among us you, and I strongly believe that the force of secularism would push back the political movement of Islamism. So this is my belief, and because of this belief, I think um, I'd be anywhere that um, my pool members are gathered, and I'm so happy to be among us you. And thank you to the organizers and participants here as I feel strongly that I'm one of you, you're one of me, and together we can win this fight. But my focus today, can you hear? No. No. He's, he's, gonna, he's, gonna, he's gonna tell me. Yeah. My focus today is about one secular school system for all children. And actually this campaign is international campaign and I'm hoping that every one of you would join this campaign and we would be very successful in this area of time. I have divided, thank you. Thanks so much. I have divided my discussion into following parts. First, I will briefly talk about the characteristics of a secular school system. Then I will concentrate on a school system in today's society where culture, tradition, and religion's right trumps children's rights. I will also discuss the effect of multiculturalism and cultural relativism in today's society. And believe it or not, I want to do all this in 10 minutes. <laughs> but characteristics of a secular school system. A universal secular school system is based on the concept of a civil and human rights of children. This system concentrates on the welfare and the free development of children as the most essential principle under all circumstances. The right of the child must overcome all national, economical, political, ideological, religious, and cultural considerations, and also their interests. A school system must accept the fact that the rights of the child are universal. The child's rights to learn will not be based on where their parents come from, what ethnic group they belong to, or what culture and religion their parents have. The school must teach religion, sorry, the school must ban teaching religion subjected to dogmas and religious interpretation of subjects. It must ban all laws and regulations that allow violations of children, free development, and mind and body, which will then eliminate discriminations and prejudice. Secular school system will ensure religion stays totally separated from the various aspects of children's social life. It will put more focus on academic knowledge. The result will be the highest possible standard of education for all children. It will provide an opportunity of growth and development for all children. Children will learn together, play together, and grow together only in that circumstances. But let us concentrate on a school system in today's society. Unfortunately, states has identified children by their parents' religion and have allowed religion to interfere with the educational system. 
I would like to describe the situation of children, especially girls living in so-called Islamic communities, as I have witnessed in first hand. Girls are segregated, mind you, I'm a social worker and I work for abused women and children. So I have witnessed horrible, horrible things that you cannot even imagine. I have witnessed ISIS input right in the middle of, in the heart of Western governments or Western countries. So Islamic communities, as I have witnessed it in first hand, girls are separated from the boys at a very young age in a school, in Islamic schools. And they are forced at the tender age to wear wills, you all know, Islamic hijab, and are prohibited from participating in sports and games in playground. Sexual assault is permitted by forcing girls as young as 13 into arranged marriages, if they don't agree and mother goes against it, they will send back to Bangladesh, Iran, Afghanistan, and so on, and they're forced into that marriage. Parents are given the right to deprive their girls of education. Children, in particular girls, are isolated from mainstream society. Polygamy, and believe me, is not only limited to Islamic schools or Islamic communities, it's everywhere. We do, have Pantum, uh, we do have an area or a sect or a cult, you call it. In British Columbia, the leader of that cult has 53 wives, and they are Canadians. So you can see that it's not limited to Islamics at all. The life of children attending Catholic schools is no difference. So children's rights are ignored in purpose. Religion is the private matter of parents and should not affect the child's civil rights. Everybody should really put this as a slogan in their mind. For the, part of, for the past three decades, culture and religions have become a primary issue dictating people's life. Culture has become more important than equality of men and women, more important than the rights of individuals, more important than the children's rights. Multiculturalism is not diversity and inclusion. It is for more segregation and imposition of law and regulation and denies equality between men and women. Children's civil rights and the right of gay and lesbians, they all been questioned by this multiculturalism, not only questioned, they have been pushed aside. It has become another, this multiculturalism has become another means to increase religious schools and centers. Just recently, because of notion of freedom of religion, which happens everywhere across the world, on June 30th, 2014, the government of Canada Department of Freedom Affairs, Trade and Development, through its um, Office of Religion Freedom, they call it ORF, is launching Religious Freedom Fund. Can you believe that? For more centers, as if we don't have enough centers. Not only Canada, but all the states have legally funded religious school and placed the children under religious dogma. The result is very obvious. States have paved the path for more segregation and isolation, deny children the opportunity of associating with others, and preventing children and their families from progressing, progressing in a modern society. Children have no religion. We have to emphasize on that times and times, and therefore putting them in the care of any religion means legitimizing the imposition of religion on them on a social level. This in turn signifies an open refusal on the part of the state to defend the rights of children's safety, happiness, and welfare. Thank you. Thanks so much. States and participants, oh, states and participants in powers are 
compromising the rights of the child for the sake of their party to gain higher political stand by using the concept of multiculturalism and cultural relativism, they are giving free hand to religious institutions to recruit youth for their own agenda. Religious schools have become the main source of religious impositions of backward tradition and ch on children. They have forcefully given them a religious identity and have encouraged discrimination, injustice, hatred, separation, and isolation. In fact, religious schools have become a perfect breeding grounds for the growth of religious extremists. I must say the reason we are holding this two-day conference is for what the political movement is, religious political movement, have been trying for the past three decades. Just to bombarding any, any, any person who has a knowledge of uh, believing in equality or have knowledge of separation of religion or is a defender of human rights or children's rights. For, for that reason, we are supposed to be the most uh, strong pool to push back this political movement. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.